you guys want to hear something scary? So I've been working on a paper about Walmart and facial recognition, like technology and surveillance and the self-checkout lines, right? What you didn't know is that Walmart works with a company called Clearview AI. Clearview AI has a database that collects photos from every social media platform all around the world. Clearview AI gives this information to Walmart, and Walmart will compare that information and those photos to their facial recognition databases. So if you are stealing in Walmart and your face is on social media, they're gonna get you. Not only do they have all of this information from Clearview AI, but they also have retina and iris scanners in the self-checkout lines. And there is currently a lawsuit pending about all of this. Not only are these software stealing your biometric data, but they are also very discriminatory. If you are a darker skinned female, you have a 35% higher chance of being arrested due to errors in the AI systems. And if you're a lighter skinned male, well, the error rate is less than 1%. Now, some of you may make the argument that there is no expectation of privacy in public or online, but harvesting biometric data without consent Shalom, call Lamla Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Kadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son, and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the elders and to the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson, he shall rebuke the wicked inventions of the heathen. So when the Bible is talking about the last days, we cannot miss the integration of technology with those times of trouble, with the days of tribulation. <clears throat> so the tribulation and the days of trouble are at hand is associated with the integration of technology, biometric scanning, voice recognition, iris scanning. So I want to go into this. The days of tribulation, the days of Jacob's trouble, is associated with the modern technological field. Let's look up this word, techno. <clears throat> and I've done this before. And it really gets into falsehood. Falsehood. Let's see here. Let's go to etymology online. Okay, we'll go here first. It's the study of falsities or falsehood, if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> Technology. Okay, we'll click on this one. <clears throat> A discourse or treatise on an art or the arts from the Latinized form of Greek technologia, technologia, systematic treatment of an art, craft, or technique, grammar, grammar from techno, combining form of tech, techne, art. Method, system, <clears throat> method or system, study of mechanical and industrial arts. Okay, forms or all or a part of polytechnic, subtle. <clears throat> fashion. Construct right here. There it is. Took forever to find it. See? Fabricate. <clears throat> so this is a fabrication of miracles, signs, and wonders. 
So it is an attempt to replicate what the Most High can do. <clears throat> That's why in Isaiah chapter 14, the wicked elite have said, I will be like the Most High. See, fabricate. So it is the study of fabrication or replication, duplication. So it is a mirror image or a shadow of the real thing. The Israelites are, or the sons of God are promised to be able to do great signs and wonders, just like Yahweh Shai. <clears throat> Let's go here to Second Ezra chapter 16. Let's go down to verse 60. Two. Second Ezra 16, verse 62. Yea, and the Spirit of Almighty God, which made all things, and searcheth out all hidden things in the secrets of the earth. So the underground facilities, the deep buried military facilities and their weaponry. Surely he knoweth your inventions and what ye think in your hearts, even them that sin and would hide their sin. So these wicked inventions is being mentioned in the same breath. And that eventually leads to man being joined to this beast system digitally with electronic tracking. So it's all connected together. <clears throat> Second Ezra 16 and 63. Surely he knoweth your inventions and what ye think in your hearts, even them that sin and would hide their sin. Therefore, hath the Lord exactly search out all your works and he will put you all to shame. Let's jump down to verse 67. Behold, God himself is the judge. Fear him and leave off from your sins and forget your iniquities to meddle no more with them forever. So shall God lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. So notice that the wicked inventions, tribulation or trouble is being mentioned in the same context, in the same breath. Because technology is going to be used as a weapon to imprison citizens. That's why Revelation 2 and 10 says, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. These facilities will have barcode technology, biometric technology, Bluetooth technology, scanning retinas and monitoring body temperatures and body heat. Let's jump up to verse 60. Six, what will ye do or how will ye hide your sins before God and his angels? So there's going to be a lake of fire on the earth burning this wicked queendom. And the angels are going to be present along with Yahawashai. That's not talking about underground hell somewhere. It's going to occur on earth. That's what this is, is going to eventually lead to. What will ye do or how will ye hide your sins before God and his angels? The host or the fleet of the chariots from heaven, the so-called UFOs. <clears throat> Let's jump down here to verse 74. Second Ezra 16, verse 74. Hear, O ye, my beloved, saith the Lord. Behold, 
the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. The days of trouble. So we cannot have trouble without the biometric scanning, without this radar surveillance, without CCTV cameras, without body heat and body temperature monitoring devices. See, and the Lord is going to have to intervene because we're under Egypt on steroids or the Roman Empire that's juiced up, taking performance enhancement or enhancers. Let's go to Second Ezra. So he's going to deliver his elect. Let's go first to Psalms 54. <clears throat> Book of Psalms, chapter 54. Let's jump up to verse. Now, this happened back then with King David, but the Bible repeats itself. Persecution comes back around, tribulation comes back around. Let's go to Psalms 54. <clears throat> Let's go to verse 3. For strangers are risen up against me, and oppressors seek after my soul. They have not set God before them. Behold, the Most High is my helper. The Lord is with them that uphold my soul. He shall reward evil unto mine enemies. Cut them off in thy truth. I will freely sacrifice unto thee. I will praise thy name, O Lord, for it is good. For he hath delivered me out of all trouble, and my eye hath seen his desire upon mine enemies. This is beautiful. So the elect are going to see the destruction of the wicked, the Edomites, followed by the other nations which, believe it or not, also includes a segment of the rebellious house of Israel, <clears throat> the heathen. So we just read, he's going to deliver you out of all trouble. We, we read it at. Promise you I'm not making this stuff up. <clears throat> Second Ezra 16, verse 74. <clears throat> Hear, O ye my beloved, saith the Lord. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. See? So we're going to see this cycle of the Lord lifting up a standard and showing his might, power, and strength and exacting his punishment and judgments with fury upon the heathen, such as they have not known. <clears throat> Let's go to Micah 5. The book of Micah, chapter 5, verse 14. And I will pluck up thy groves out of the midst of thee, so will I destroy thy cities, and I will execute vengeance in anger and fury upon the heathen, such as they have not heard. So all the nations are going to fear and put some respect on his name. Whose name? The God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. So he's going to preserve his sanctuary, his temple, of the elect of the house of Israel that are going to be delivered from this technocracy, from tyranny, from the oppressor or the hand of the oppressor. <laughs> Let's go to Job chapter 5. Yeah, we'll go ahead and read this one. Job 5, verse 11. 
to set up on high those that be low, that those which mourn may be exalted to safety. He disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. So their wicked inventions underneath this technological umbrella is going to be disappointed. Building the new world order upon what? Social credit scores. Technological inventions. The integration of biometrics with the human anatomy. Subthermal or subdermal under the skin. Merging beasts with machine, people, animals. Let's turn down to verse 19. Job chapter 5, verse 17. Behold, happy is the man whom God correcteth. Therefore, despise not the chastening of the Almighty. So, this is why Revelation says that this trial and test of our faith and tribulation is going to come upon all the world. See that? Which is linked in to the digital grid. So this is the most high's program that he has constructed to test the integrity of his elect. The same way he raised up Pharaoh and the Egyptian empire. <clears throat> Job 5, verse 17. Behold, happy is the man whom God correcteth. Therefore despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. For he maketh sore and bindeth up. He wounded and his hands make whole. He delivered thee. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. In famine he shall redeem thee from death and in war from the power of the sword. So all of this technology is going to come to a head towards the escalation and buildup to Armageddon or the Third World War. So Armageddon means mountain of troops. So the wicked inventions of these nations is going to clash in the battlefield to come. So this next battle it's going to be a short battle. There's no more long drawn out wars anymore. Once this thing builds up to the boiling point of a nuclear war, all out war. Let's go to Second Ezra chapter eight. <clears throat> Second Ezra chapter eight. <clears throat> Let's go down to verse. 20. O Lord, thou that dwellest in everlastingness, which beholdest from above things in the heaven and in the air, whose throne is inestimable, whose glory may not be comprehended, before whom the hosts of angels stand with trembling. The third heaven, the fourth dimension. Second Nedra 8 and 22, whose service is conversant in wind and fire, whose word is true and sayings constant, whose commandment is strong and ordinance fearful, whoso whose look drieth up the depths and indignation maketh the mountains to melt away which the truth witnesseth. So these nations are going to be melted, starting with the two-third Israelites. 
The Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 21 and Ezekiel chapter 22, he's going to melt the wicked or the rebels, the Israelites, followed by the other nations of the heathen. Second Ezra 8 and 22, whose service is conversant in wind and fire, whose word is true and sayings constant, whose commandment is strong and ordinance fearful, whose look drive up the depths and indignation maketh the mountains to melt away, which the truth witnesseth. O hear the prayer of thy servant and give ear to the petition of thy creature. For while I live, I will speak, and so long as I have understanding, I will answer. So it takes the Holy Spirit to be able to receive a message from the heavenly realm and the understanding of the whole book, the whole gospel, which brings us to the end of days, which is which is a companion of technology in these last days. So the tribulation, the troubles, are a part of that technological grid. So this technological grid is an umbrella of oppression and tyranny. Let's get ready to read. Let's go here. Second Ezra chapter eight verse twenty five. For while I, for while I live, I will speak, and so long as I have understanding, I will answer. O look not upon the sins of thy people, but on them which serve thee in truth. Regard not the wicked inventions of the heathen, but the desire of those that keep thy testimonies. In afflictions, why is affliction mentioned in the same breath as the wicked inventions? This scripture here is very, very key. So the technology is being used to create a end of times prison construct, scan in to facilities, scan out of facilities, scan to eat, scan to buy something to drink, scan to travel. So even the cities are going to become prisons and homes. This is going to be house arrests on steroids or performance enhancers. That's what's coming. That's why the Bible says a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able to. See how all this comes together? Let's read this again. Second Ezra 8, verse 27. Regard not the wicked inventions of the heathen, but the desire of those that keep thy testimonies in affliction. Think not upon those that have walked faintly before thee, but remember them which according to thy will have known thy fear. So the elect are going to be preserved from this kingdom of beasts. Brute beasts, savages, a habitation of devils. Second Ezra chapter 8, verse 28. Let's go to 29. Let it not be thy will to destroy them which have lived like beasts, but to look upon them that have clearly taught thy law. Well, the remnant of a hopeful elect 
have demonstrated faithfulness, integrity, by teaching diligently in sincerity, not to get women, not to get fame, not to get notoriety or notice, not to treat this truth like a social media train ride or a social media high. The Lord is going to kill you if that's you. Let's keep going. Let's go to Psalms 109, verse, <clears throat> a book of Psalms, chapter 109, verse 28. Let them curse, but bless thou. When they arise, let them be ashamed but let thy servant rejoice. This is beautiful. So the, the Lord's people are going to see the downfall and the destruction of a cursed people, the wicked, and their cohorts, those in bed with them. Psalms 109, verse 29. Let mine adversaries be clothed with shame and let them cover themselves with their own confusion as with a mantle. I will greatly praise the Lord with my mouth, yea, I will praise him among the multitude, for he shall stand at the right hand of the poor to save him from those that condemn his soul, those that condemn the innocent blood, those that oppress the poor, righteous man, are going to be dismayed. So the Lord is our defense. The Lord is our shield and buckler. The Lord is our refuge and our safe haven for security and protection. He's getting ready to show himself. Go here to the book of Psalms, chapter 94. <clears throat> book of Psalms, chapter 94, verse 14. For the Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. So this replacement theology and new age doctrine, new age religion, universal doctrine, Catholic means universal. It's all doctrines of man. It's false. We just read the Lord will not cast off his people. <clears throat> For the Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance, but judgment shall return unto righteousness and all the upright and heart shall follow it. That's the Lord's anointed, the upright in heart. Psalms 94, verse 16. Who will rise up for me against the evil doers, or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul had almost dwelt in silence. So the word quickens us, wakes us up, and stands us on our feet in order to fight the wicked. How can we fight the wicked without this spiritual sword, this Bible, the shield of faith, the breastplate of faith, the helmet of salvation? So this is a spiritual battle. Psalms 94, verse 18. When I said, my foot slippeth, thy mercy, O Lord, held me up. In the multitude of my thoughts within me, thy comforts delight my soul. So this word is spiritual manner. It is a comforter. 
Psalms 94, verse 20. This is where I wanted to go right here. So this technocracy is a throne of iniquity under the beast, the devil. Remember, the Bible says Satan and his angels were cast into the lake of fire. Where they were defeated. So they're going to be cast into the lake of fire. That's the third and final battle. Armageddon. Let's get it because I just butchered it. The way it's written. Revelation 12. That throne of iniquity. Is under this wicked kingdom. The beast. Revelation 12. 12, verse 7, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. So the dragon is on his throne. The Roman Empire the beast. So this is a wicked throne. Or you think the Bible says that the thrones were cast down in Daniel chapter 7. So we're, we're witnessing or we're serving under the throne of the great red dragon, Rome, the beast. And there was a war and there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought, and his angels, their, mil their military might, their aircraft, stealth, fight, stealth bombers, stealth fighters, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So they're going to be cast into the fiery furnace, the pit, or the lake burning with fire and brimstone. Now, that's the throne of iniquity. Psalms 94, verse 20. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law? So the mischief is being, are the devices of the devil. Technological advances. Let's look at this word mischief. It's all about control. Mischief comes from the Hebrew. Strong's H 5999. Amal. Amal. Wow, this is beautiful. You know, I've missed this. Check this out. I'm going to highlight it. Worry, whether of body or mind. See? <clears throat> Who's trying to integrate technology into the human mind? Who's trying to integrate technology into the body? Grievances. Iniquity, mischief, labor, travail, trouble. So they're trying to bring forth the birth of a new world order. That's that travail, like a woman giving birth. So this is the attempt to bring forth the birth of a wicked kingdom under the daughter of Babylon, under the beast, 
the European Union and NATO because we know the daughter of Babylon is prophesied to be burned with fire first. Wow, see, trouble. So that trouble is linked with the digital grid. This is heavy. Worrisome, trouble, wickedness, whether of body or mind. So the throne of iniquity is using oppressive devices. Psalms 94, verse 20. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law? They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous and condemn the innocent blood. They're going to cause all, both small and great, rich and poor, to receive a M to the A to the R to the K. And many are going to be beheaded for the testimony of Yahweh Shai, his affliction, his bloodshed, his story of redemption, and having the faith in Yahweh Shai that he was raised up from the dead. So the throne of iniquity is gathering themselves together against the souls of the righteous. They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous and condemn the innocent blood. But the Lord is my defense and my power is the rock of my refuge. So our safety our fallback plan, for lack of better words, is our sword and shield and buckler, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. But the Lord is my defense and my power is the rock of my refuge. And he shall bring upon them their own iniquity and shall cut them off in their own wickedness. Yea, the Lord our God shall cut them off. So their own iniquity is to what? Enslave the population. So they're going to become victims of their own aspirations, their own endeavors to usher in a new world order. The real new world order is going to come with Yahweh Shai occupying his throne and casting down the thrones of the workers of iniquity. <clears throat> Let's read that again. Psalms 94, verse 23. And he shall bring upon them their own iniquity and shall cut them off in their own wickedness. Yea, the Lord our God shall cut them off. So they get no salvation. They get no mercy. Their memorial is going to be cut off. They're not going to have a name in the street. They're going to be beat down to nothing. Nobody's. See, Psalm 60, verse 11. Give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. Being integrated or linked in is vanity. Being digitally tagged and stamped like cattle is vanity. Trusting in a technological advance buying and selling system is vain. The Lord is our hope, our defense. Being linked into a 
digital grid causes radiation. When we're allowing these Bluetooth signals from 5G and 6G to radiate throughout our bodies causes cancer, infection. I mean, who wants to allow radiation to penetrate into their vessel? You got to be out of your damn mind to do that. So genuine help is from the spiritual realm. What we can't see is more powerful than what we can see. Psalm 60 verse 11 Give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. Through God we shall do valiantly, for he it is that shall tread down our enemies. So the beast is going to be defeated. The system, this technocracy, this digital grid or network of the global elites of the business enterprise that were under the revised Roman Empire on performance enhancement drugs, technology, the wicked inventions of the heathen. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying all praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem. Or Kadash. Barack Thumb. See you on the next lesson, Lord Willem. Kwame Sharala and the Bad the Ball. We got next, Lord Willem. Shalom.